anyone involved with the Oak Island universe is that type of person. You guys, I can tell you're that type of person. You hear a story like this, you latch onto it like a dog and you're just like, let's go. And yes, it's frustrating. And yes, it, it, you want it to be solved tomorrow. And yes, who doesn't want to find a chest of gold? Of course we do. Of course, everyone does. But it doesn't work like that sometimes. These things are hard. And so it's taking what it's taking. And that is, in this case, 10 years. Right. Yeah. Does it, how does it affect us in 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 changing of the history or getting down to the nitty gritty of the history? It won't. It won't change history. It will explain. There you go. Perfect. History. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I was. Um, it will explain parts of North American history you've never thought about. See, I can't. The, the, the History Channel could not have come up with a better teaser than we just did right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, I tell you what. Stay tuned, folks, yeah. because this is going to be a good one. I can't wait. This is Robert Clotworthy, the narrator of The Curse of Oak Island. And I have a question for you. Could it be that you are listening to The Curse of Oak Island and Beyond live stream? This is a top pocket find, mate, for sure. Hey everybody, welcome to the Curse of Oak Island and Beyond live stream. Uh, Tom Burns and I are here to kind of core our way into this particular episode. Tom, how are you doing tonight? Great, great, great. How about you? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. I uh, I, I have arrived. I'm finally uh, in Texas. I got in here Sunday. Um, so yeah, I got all settled out and everything. Uh, internet is not as good as it was in florida so if i freeze up tom you got the show tonight so all right so just it won't last long I'll, I'll have to do sing a couple of bars and it'll be over like <laughs> everybody will leave no no we so, can't so have much that. for the ratings so much for the ratings <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh but yeah so texas is uh pretty cool um i i have been to texas before but uh, never spent a lot of time here and i tell you i've been talking with um our friend uh christian roper a little bit and um i guess i'm gonna get to meet him here and uh maybe tomorrow he was telling me about a place here called the, the uh marfa marfa lights it's some lights that show up out in this valley across this valley and everybody it's a mystery thing so uh he's heading over to check those out he's gonna come by here i guess and we're gonna have lunch i hope so uh yeah so that'd be good trip <clears throat> It's been great to come around and meet people. And of course, this weekend is Gypsy Jewels uh, metal detecting event, uh, detecting with Gypsy. And uh, that's going on on Friday and Saturday. Uh, I'm going to, uh, again, tomorrow, I've got to go over there and uh, take over this big box of stuff that I've got in, crammed in the in the uh, car. Are you going to be, uh, are, uh, Donna McCauley is here. Donna, are you going to be there uh, this weekend also? Let me know. I really want to meet you too. I get. I hope I get a chance. To meet you um i see donna's here so let's yeah. say hi to some folks wow man oh man so much chat <laughs> all right i can't even get back to the beginning Crazy. Going craig is the first one here tonight craig robbins all right hey craig uh let's see dean is here jeff's in the house mark uh i'm trying to oh okay i really hope you do i, I really want to get a chance to meet you i'll be there both days of course but uh um let's see here uh, who else is here christy hi christy jackie yeah over on facebook we got barbara and jan of course jan's over there jan mm -hmm. look just so you know jan synopsis worth its weight in gold <laughs> yeah. tom's tom's notes oh look at that not worth the powder to blow them to <laughs> <laughs> they make good fire starter though right yeah no <laughs> yeah, stick with jan's notes people yeah, I stick with Jan's notes. Yep, absolutely. Hey, Kat's here. Oh, we were having a lot of fun last night in Discord again with Kat and everybody. We were all in there talking it up and having a good old time. Uh, yeah, Alessandra. thank you, Ayo. Hey, Alessandra, Henry, Sharon over in Maine. Mm -hmm. Kat, Nova right. Scotia. Deborah. Yeah, thanks, guys. I, for showing I think up. I said hi to Henry. I'm pretty sure I did. Ryan. Ryan's here. Hey, Ryan. Yeah, we were having a lot of fun in Discord last night, watching uh, different things and talking about all the episodes and everything that was going on. We were having a great old time, and I really appreciate. I was listening it. to it. I was listening to it. It was pretty good. Yeah, we were having fun. I was, I was, I mean, I'm still working on the microphone thing, but you know, I think I'll get there. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah, it's really fun. If, if, if any of you are here that don't know what I'm talking about with Discord, I have a Discord channel, and uh, the link for it is down below. You have to install Discord on your tablet, your PC, your phone, whatever, and then you can go to that link, click the link, and it'll take you right to my server. It's all free, no cost anywhere. You don't have to pay for the app. You don't have to pay for you know the Discord or anything. Uh, there's a couple questions it asks you. It just kind of gets an idea if you like Skinwalker Ranch or Curse of Oak Island or Beyond Our World or all three. Yeah, um, make sure you take the free option. You're not paying to subscribe to it. Yeah, yeah. It'll so prompt um, you if you want to do some other stuff that costs money. Just oh, does say it? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. just say no. Just say no, it. and they'll take you right through. Yeah, yeah. Just say no. Just say no. And that used to be a campaign. Hey, Eva, how you doing? Oh, made it by the skin of her teeth. Well, we're glad you made it. All right, good deal. Uh, Sand Dollar Ray is here. Uh, I've been getting some of your emails, and I have been reading them, but I, I tell you, this last week has been crazy. The last two weeks have been crazy trying to get everything done and get myself here. Uh, I also wanted, uh, oh, Alan, Alan Hall. Hi, Alan, from Massachusetts. All right. I love it when you guys put, uh, this is something that Colin always said. If you put down where you're from, I just love that. It's, it's so interesting to see. Uh, where people are from. Deborah really Pohl. Love that. Georgia? Is that where we're from? Who? Deborah? Is she from Florida? I see a response in there. She's Florida, maybe. Or oh. Georgia, maybe. Georgia. Okay. From Germany. I'm geographically I'm challenged. I'm geographically oh, challenged, so just ignore me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're from uh, Euro. You're Canuck. Well, I can find my way around the woods. That's not a big deal. If you put me in a big <laughs> city, we got a problem. <laughs> David in Illinois. Hey, David. Anne Marie is here, of course. Uh, All the way from Germany. Gurney. Ah, Jack. Hey, Jack. All right. Uh, I did want to say, too, uh, yes, I do have a real job. Yes, I do. I do have an eight to five that I do every day. And uh, <clears throat> so I have to use my evenings and weekends to get other everything else done. I did want to say that I just finished... Um, uploading a video i had if for those of you i know that not everybody's into the whole bigfoot thing um i have been exploring it i'm using this platform with the beyond our world uh facebook page to kind of explore uh the whole bigfoot phenomenon um i'm still a skeptic i i still need some proof uh but anyway so i was with uh some folks um last weekend uh, I was with uh, Marie and uh, see Marie Dumont and um, Chris uh, Hensley and Mike Aguilar. Uh, I was with them out in uh, mid Florida. Uh, we did a, they took me out to the swamps and we were literally in the swamps and I put together a video. I did an interview with them. So basically this part one is the interview with some snapshots and a little bit of video of what we did in the woods um, in the swamp. And so I have put that up on YouTube. It's up there, but I haven't made it public yet. I'll do that after the show tonight. It's about 32 minutes long, something like that. Um, but I had a great time with them out there, and we saw some pretty cool stuff. So be watching for that. And that's why you need to subscribe and click on that notification bell on the YouTube channel, because that way, when I do put up new videos like that, if it's not live, you get notified right away, and you know when I have new content, you can go check it out. And if you like the content of our show, please give a thumbs up. It really, really does help. Like AO said, uh, it really helps the algorithms a lot. So if you don't mind, give us a thumbs up. We appreciate that very, very much. And uh, I want to just say thank you to our patrons. Uh, we have a few patrons, and I appreciate you all so very, very much out at patreon.com. And it's slash j 906 out there. All right. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get started. So season 10, episode number 17, The Well of Secrets. When I heard that name, I was thinking, I wonder, you know, they said something about another well yeah. uh, they had found on the island. And apparently this is it, what they're going to be talking about. I mean, I didn't know how many there were, but I guess there's like 10, right? Is that yeah. Uh, uh, Rick made the comment last night. He referred to the other eight. You're talking about the two wells we've been looking at most recently. And then he referred to the other eight wells on the island. Mm -hmm. And he's something he said. Uh, well, I'll tell you, let's let's start off at the beginning before I get ahead of myself here and uh, get my pictures all started up. Because, you know, I love those pictures. Let's see. Uh, oh, yes. Thank you, Linda. No Curse of Oak Island next Tuesday. Uh, but Maddie is doing a special um that is in that time in slot that time next slot. tuesday at nine 
Um, so what we're going to do, what we thought we would do for next week, um, we'll probably go ahead and still have a show on Wednesday night. Uh, we may talk about Maddie's uh, show on Tuesday night a little bit, but let's let's make it a, a fan show. I'm not a fan of this show, unless you happen to be. I appreciate that. But a fan of the Curse of Oak Island. And we'll maybe take some phone calls. Uh, we might throw a few questions out there. Tom was coming up with some good mm -hmm. questions to ask. Um, so we may put those up in the chat and just, uh, take your, take your answers and, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and anybody that is in discord, if you want to, um, if you're in the discord and you want to come on and talk, maybe we'll take some calls. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but we're just going to have a little, a fun show and just yeah. include all the fans of the curse of Oak Island. And we'll just chat it up and speculate away about what's going to happen in the last, what, three or four. I think we got three or four episodes left. The rumor on the street is three or four. Yep. Yeah. Whew. Not many. No. <laughs> thank no. you, Eva. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, so yeah. So uh more episodes is March 28th. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're skipping next week, and then the, the one that they just previewed last night is the 28th. Yeah, thank you. All right. So let's uh, let's see here. All right, add to the stream. There we go. All right. So the Curse of Oak Island, uh, the Well of Secrets, and uh, as we get started, you know, another great shot. This looks like a chilly morning getting started there, um, on Oak Island there. But you know, I you know, I think we figured out by looking at that bag that uh, Laird was holding that at least what they were doing on the wall was somewhere around August, right? Is that what you caught on it? Yeah, August thirty first. So the end of August. So if, if they're, if the, or no, that was, yeah, that, if that, if those two dates correlate, yeah, the, the charcoal yeah. was in a bag dated August 31st. Mm -hmm. So if um, those two dates correlate, that's about the time frame. Yeah. About the time frame that we're at, you know, it's and kind I of thought you, we were later than that, you know, for yeah, sure. It kind of makes you wonder if they're showing us something from August 31st, you know, if there's only three or four shows left, they're going to have to cram a lot in three or four shows. Yeah. And but I they hope were they were there do. until October, November. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, they were there really late this season. So I, I just, you know, and it makes you wonder what they're going to put in. Because, you know, honestly, the last couple episodes haven't been, you know, jammed full of great stuff. Um, good stuff, but not great stuff like we've seen. And I really am curious about Dumas and how far they're going to get um, down in the garden shaft. So we'll find out. And there it is right there, the garden shaft. And the guy's working hard. I love the fact that they have that camera set up now. Yeah. Um, and they lowered it down in there. So the guys you see out there looks like probably Scott and uh, Paul Troutman standing in the tent over there. Scott and Paul, of, yeah. Yeah, watching what's going on. And you see Choice drilling back there. And again, we don't know for sure where we this, you know, where this picture at is in the time frame. But they're back there drilling, uh, doing something. I caught that. That's why I kind of grabbed this picture and there's the water truck. So, you know, that they're drilling or the water truck wouldn't be right there with the hose going over for the sonic mm -hmm. drill rig. But, no. and that's gotta be over by that M, uh, M 16.25 somewhere over in that area. I would think interesting back where they dropped that sonar and got the image of the tunnel with the elbow. Yep. That's back over in that general area. That area. So, okay. That's my best guess. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. generally, that might be a little bit further south um, than M16.25, but it'll be right there somewhere in that area. Uh, so they bring um, Marty comes over to check things out at the garden shaft uh, to get an update. And um, this gentleman right here, uh, Rodney um, McIver, uh, is helping him out. You know, and it's kind of mm -hmm. neat. I think it's kind of neat how they've been showing different guys that work for Dumas yeah. up here. You know, we had Barry White up here last week um you know talking and stuff and uh, mm -hmm. he was in the tent now we got rodney's in the tent this week i love that i really do give yeah. some guys a chance to come up and be part of what's going on exactly i think that's really cool so he gives them a little bit of an update rodney tells him that they are installing the next set at the 56 foot level Mm -hmm. um so that's about what seven that's about seven sections so far seven sections if they're putting them every eight feet so seven eight is 56 right yep yep so uh yeah they're working on that one and you see how they're lowering the beams down i love this picture with that camera anyway you can get an idea of how they're 
you know, lowering those beams down there, getting everything started uh, so they can put them in. And of course, we know that they're doing the drill program that, you know, the probing, once they get the, the, the decking put in and everything, then they'll bring the drill down and they can do those probe, those 12 uh, probe drills that they do three in each wall um, as they go around. And that's kind of neat. I, I was looking at this picture right here and I didn't know if this is just a, a fluke, but remember how uh, Scott Barlow, when he was down there with Rick and he commented about how it seemed like one side of the shaft is lower than the other. Mm -hmm. Now we don't know for sure which side we're looking at here, but you notice this gap right here. Yeah. And I, I was looking at that it's real wide right here, about four inches. And over here, it's like two, it could just be the way the boards are cut. It might not be okay. anything at all, but I happened to catch that. And I thought, you know, that Dumas is making theirs level. Yeah. Theirs is going to be straight and level. You know, they're not going to mess around with it. But the old shaft that was there before that the refurbing uh, was sinking on one corner, it seemed like. So, uh, 50, well, 56, Ryan, is what I caught when uh, I went back and listened to it today because I wasn't sure. And I, I believe he said 56 feet um, every eight feet. Anyway, it's a division. So, um, yeah, when, when they first started talking, they, they did say 55. They said 50 to 55 foot range, but then yeah. then he did say 56. Yeah, but yep. yeah, no, I mean, it's all in that general ballpark anyway. So yeah, exactly. I thought that they would be you know further down by now, but you know what? And in this this whole idea behind the drill, the probe drill mm -hmm. that they're doing, that's going to really slow them down. I mean, it's something they have to do. I mean, without a doubt, they have to do it. But you got to figure that once they get putting a new set down, you know, then they have to bring the drill down. That's going to yeah. take time. How long does it take them to drill 12 holes? Probably a day or two. Yeah. It's going to depend on, depend on the resistance, I guess. Yeah. Cause they're going what between six and 12 feet for each one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Depends on what you find and what you're going through. Exactly. So it's got to really slow the thing down. But again, like I said, they have to do it. Um, but uh, Marty told him, uh, Rodney, that, it, you know, about the gold content that they're finding in the wood. So he said, make sure that you, you know, keep bringing some wood over to us. And that's what he's doing here. He's bringing over some wood samples that they can get then tested. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, yeah. So they think, they're hoping, and we'll see this as we get toward the end of this, this episode, the fact that the gold content is getting more as they go along or go deeper. Mm -hmm. um are they getting closer to something mm -hmm. uh, an offset well, here's, shaft? Here's, here's my question if mm -hmm. there's gold on the wood or in the wood and it's getting deeper as they're going or getting higher in concentration as they go deeper why aren't they testing the sand or the stuff they take out of the hole they should find be. out if there's any, any gold in that well they have there was a picture of and i don't know let me back up here i don't know no, I don't have any pictures of yeah, the article. They haven't, they haven't told us if they've ever tested the sand the can, or the mud or whatever came out of the hole. That's correct. Right? Dry it out, put it on, okay. put it in the machine. The machine mm -hmm. is going to do its, you know, reflection right. of the mineral content. And it's going to tell us if there's any, any sand or in, anything in the, in the mud, sand, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they should right? be. If, it, if it's on the wood, it should be in the, whatever they're hauling out of the hole. Exactly. Exactly right. Um, so, uh, yeah, they're taking a sample to Emma for every hole they drill. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe have a phone. Yeah. So knowing that, that they're doing that. And, and like you said, that, that I remember seeing the, where the probe drill was going in through the hole in the wall that they created. And they take that mm -hmm. piece of wood and they go get it sampled. They were putting a little bucket underneath there to catch those samples. So you're hoping yes. that they're checking that stuff. Mm -hmm. you, you would think they would. Also, yes. the hammer grab. Every time that hammer grab goes down and grabs a, a bucket full or a hammer grab full of that mud and solution, they're putting it in um, the back of the uh, um, the dump truck. They better be checking that too. I would think. Let it go. I would think they're hauling that off somewhere, and they're going to let it dry and let Gary at least metal detect it. Right. Uh, taking the dirt or sand samples to Emma. Yeah, they probably are. I would assume. I would assume they have to be at some point. Yeah. Hey, Kevin. Kevin Dorsey's here. I got a chance to meet Kevin 
Uh, and I'm going to show that picture. I haven't posted that picture yet, Kevin, but I really, I had an opportunity to meet Kevin, had lunch uh, with him uh, on the other side of Houston as I was coming across from, from Florida. And uh, I stopped in, uh, uh, on the other side of Houston and, uh, and met him for lunch. And uh, uh, it was really a nice, oh, I don't have it out here. I got a little gift from him and I didn't, I meant to put it on the desk here, <laughs> but um Anyway, but I got an opportunity and that's, that's, I tell you, that's one of the greatest things about doing this show is that, that I get to meet uh, fans of the Curse of Oak Island and, and people that watch. And I really, uh, I really appreciate that very much. Kevin was a great guy. We had a great conversation uh, about everything and about the Templars and everything else. So I really appreciate it. How are you doing, Kevin? Glad to, glad to see you here tonight. Um, what discord channel look down in the uh, Keith, look down in the, the um, description of the show. And you will see there's a link right there to it. It'll say Discord channel. Join us on Discord. And you click that link. But you have to have Discord installed on whatever device you're you're looking for. So, uh, yeah, it's JFree906 is the name of the uh, uh, channel. So, okay. Yeah, I was just looking at some of the other chat over here. St. John, New, uh, New Brunswick. That's uh, Tara. Is originally from oh. St. John. She lives in Charlottetown. Yep. Ah, PIE yep. or PEI, sorry. PEI, yeah. yeah. That was speaking of PEI, meeting Scott in Florida too. Scott Barlow. That was so mm. cool. That was really, really cool. Him and his family. It was it was really an awesome, what an awesome day. I mean, that was just a and then I got my son was down. I got to see him too. I know. But yeah, meeting Scott Barlow was really, really cool. Uh, all right. So, and I grabbed this picture here too, because I was looking at these and these were installed later on these two like pillars right here on either side. This is something that was added later. I didn't see those early on. I don't, I was wondering what they were using them for. Obviously this is the side that the hammer grab goes down. And I thought maybe it's there to protect the wood because the hammer grab is, you know, as much as the guy is probably a professional that's putting them down in there, they're banging around. But I was wondering about these two. Uh, mm. They look like what eight by eights. Wood. Oh yeah, be at least that. Yeah, yeah, like an eight by eight beam uh, sitting there. I just kind of wondered what that was all about. Yeah, they could have them done to act like a bumper. Yeah, like a bumper or something for what what they got to put down. Yeah. You see them over the side of wharfs and docks all the time. They put the big timbers down to act. That's as a what I was thinking. Because you know, when you watch the the hammer grab go down there, and you see it banging against this, that you can see this is all chewed out right here. Because mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's got to be hard. There was a guy that was actually holding a stick there for a while, kind of guiding it. You know, as to because it's got to be difficult to get that in there without banging into oh, yeah. something. Yeah, for be sure. Possible. And I saw this bucket too. I was. Okay, I always notice all this stuff. I'm sorry. But there's like this bucket right here, too. I was wondering if that's a muck bucket. I didn't know what that was all about. Anyway, I digress. Sorry about that. All right. So we got the, the so war now, room. Yeah, we jump over to the war room. And this is where uh, Rick and the group is having a meeting with Mr. Tom Nolan. Um, you remember a couple of weeks ago, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, Tom was talking. He was, I think they were out on the deck. Um, okay, yeah, I, okay. Yeah, I can. I was just reading a message from Linda here. Um, yeah, I probably will before the night's over. I'll, I'll do before the show's over. I'll do that. Um, so Tom was sitting out on the deck. I think it was the interpretive center. They were out there on the deck and he was started talking about a book that his father, uh, Fred Nolan was putting together having to do with everything he had done up to that point uh, on Oak Island. And he never really thought too much about it and all of that, but then decided that, you know, he would, you know, start looking into it. Well, lo and behold, he starts coming up with some new information and that's what they're doing here in the war room. They're meeting with him. Um, and that's exactly it. They're talking about Fred's Fred Nolan's work on the island. Tom explains mm -hmm. that in the early 80s, his dad started a book about his work on the island. And in the 70s, Tom and his dad worked near the swamp when they found a well that had been filled in and buried. Now, I, apparently, Tom didn't think that this was important. And really, I mean, a well is a well, right? I mean, you don't know the significance of it. 
until they started to find the significance of the will on lot 26. Now, knowing that, Tom probably went, hey, that one, everybody's finding something pretty significant about that other well, and it had silver, tested silver in the water. Mm -hmm. Then he brings up this well that they found on lot uh, 11, right? 26. Well, no. Uh, no, one. no. Oh, oh, the, the Fred Nolan's well is lot 11. Yeah. 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 Um, and so uh, he said it was about 10 feet. Uh, he said Tom recalls that it was about 10 feet deep. And at the bottom of the well, there was a large amount of broken pottery. Mm. His dad filled it back in. And then Tom feels it would be good to investigate it. Rick agrees uh, that they should take a look at it and they would proceed with digging the well out. And I thought that was really cool that uh, that that came up and that they get an opportunity to go look at it. And we'll get to the well here in just a little bit. Another thing that he brought up was something that we had never heard of before. At least no, I didn't. I haven't either. And that was the uh, quadrilateral. <coughs> yeah. Now, the quadrilateral, if you see here in this picture, this is right from the book, and you can see in the, right here is the book, and uh, it's very well made, and, and you figure that Fred Nolan, being as meticulous as he was, being a uh, uh, surveyor, that he would have, he, would, he wouldn't have that a, book a, fantastic. a book chicken scratching in it. He yeah, would have when he read. first flipped that book open, or had the book and flipped it open, I thought, oh, it's, got, it's like a Hillroy Scribbler or something, and then he's made yeah. his notes in it now when you see it you go holy smokes like this guy yeah. put some serious work into this stuff some serious work and his drawings are mm. very uh surveyor like even his rocks look like rocks i mean <laughs> mm. but here it is here so 16 by 24 by 32 and then 27 along this edge um and filled with boulders That's the horizontal view. Now you look at it from this view here, and he says it's about ten feet deep. Uh, when you get your right arm to get your hand on one of those stumps to get it dated. Oh yeah, and I bet mm. you that's what Ian's thinking too. <laughs> mm. If there is stumps down there like that, yeah, he says stumps, and he already found them. I uh, hope, hopefully, he left them in there. And charcoal. There's your dating. There's your charcoal. Yep. Oh, and what's this? I wondered what this was right here. There's nothing pointing to it. Nothing that says what it is. It's two mm -hmm. inches or two feet. Was well, that two feet? I don't know. Mm -hmm. From there to there is says two feet right here. So I'm looking at this going, uh, okay, what what is that? Is that a lid? A lid to something? Yes, the stumps are dateable, Cap. You betcha. The quad is interesting. Yes, it is, Ryan. It's in, you know, and yep. um, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, um, Tara. I I don't know. I mean, in the seventies, depends on when in the seventies. I would remember. I mean, I'm not old. <laughs> Um, so anyway, pretty interesting, is it not? I mean, of all the times, you know, here we are, season 10, and they're just now learning about the quadrilateral. No. Now, we do know that Tom, you know, I mean, he, he, I don't know that he is always in, in course of time had access to all of his father's stuff. We don't know. Um, no. But anyway. It's interesting, <clears throat> it's interesting he didn't label that box at the bottom either. Yeah. I, I saw this and I was like, wait just a minute. What is that? Mm. Is that an entrance to something? What do you guys think? What is that? Are they, what do you, uh, we'll throw this question out here for the, for the chat. Cause I, I love to interact with everybody. Um, what do you think is, is they'll find in this? They're going to dig it up next week or going to start anyway. I don't know how far they'll get or not next week. I'm sorry. The 28th. Well, what do you think? What do you think they're going to find down there? Just throw that out there. Will it be nothing? Will it just be a pile of rocks? Or will they find something? Will they be able to date it and find out? You know, what do you think? Throw it, throw your, what do you think, Tom? <laughs> if you want to go yeah. there. <clears throat> no, but I'm just looking at, looking at your diagram. So that box is two feet wide, right? 
according to that. That's what it says right here. To the diagram, yep. Could it become kind of a drain? Yeah, it could. It could be a drain. A drain? Somebody said that's what Ryan said, a drain. Uh, oh, yeah, um, okay. the And I can't tell you exactly, uh, Renee, about its relationship to the cross, but it did say... Tom explains that Fred found it by using a offset sight line of the cross, and it is about 200 feet from the top and on the north side of the cross. Right. So the north side would be the water side, okay, mm -hmm. off Nolan's property towards his dock and all that. So that's the north side. So about 200 feet about 200 feet from the top on the north side. Hmm. So I got a map. Uh, matter of fact, I'll tell you what. Let me, uh, let me jump over here and grab the map real quick. And we'll try to get an idea. And I tried to find one quickly before the show started tonight about this, but I didn't get it. Um, and we're assuming... That it is um, on lot. I think lot 14 is the top of the cross. So that would put it right about in here. If you can see my hand. Oh, look at that. It's really messing up. Right here, just a little bit off the O of Oak Island Tours, right here in lot 14. That's my guess right about in that area because we know that the cross starts about here goes down we know that the um one arm of it is actually the one cone uh boulder is actually in the right. water um and that's right about here and right about in this or off the dock area of their property so i would place it probably right about in here and i know my mouse is really screwing up there oh my goodness yeah i don't know why it's doing that the top third of lot 14 Somewhere in there. Yeah. So, uh, was that close to uh, there on Zena's map? You know, I'll get a minute. I'll go look for, I'll pull up Zena's map. Yeah. You're probably, I know. I know. It really has been messing up lately. My mouse point. I don't know why. Maybe it's the internet connection, must be something to do with the internet connection. So, It puts it right about in that area. So, but this equilateral or quadrilateral. Quadrilateral, yeah. Quadrilateral. <clears throat> it, it, this is really a cool, you know, I mean, so many times the guys around the island, here they've been on the island. Well, we're, we're at season 10, but we know that the guys were on the island probably four or five years prior to. Is that about right, Linda? About four or five years prior to the TV cameras. So, okay, say 15 years that they've been on Oak Island now. <clears throat> and in all this time, they keep finding new things that they never found before. <clears throat> now, this particular one, now, of course, this is on Tom Nolan's property. They have to have permission to look at anything that's on Tom Nolan's property. They have to have Tom's yep. permission. Private property, so, yep. You know, so until they get that um, and they work on that, that's, that's, the, that's the way it is. But... Um, it's interesting. And depending, how deep, and depending how deep they go, this stuff's down 10, 11 feet, right? They're going to need permits. Permits. We already ran into that when they were at the well. Yeah. And that's about where they're going to get down to about 12 when they get down to this, whatever this is here on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Check mouse configuration. Yep. Okay. Because they had, they had to stop when they were looking at the well, and they were, I'm guessing, they were, looked like they were. Well, I mean, they were up to their heads, so they're probably six feet, and they had to stop. Yeah. yeah. Yep. It yep. was a lot deeper than two feet. The two feet they thought it was, it was a lot deeper than that. Uh, Raul, I think you can turn those on. Um, he wants subtitles, but I think I think they can be turned on. I don't have them automatically turned on. Uh, here's the book, and this is what Tom and I were just referring to about the book. Look how look how well done this book is. I mean, mm -hmm. again, 
Then you like to Fred flip a couple of pages and see if he tells us what that box is. <clears throat> I know, right? I was trying to I, actually. I was. I took this picture because I was trying to read. I was trying to read this. Uh, where first discovered this. You know, you can't. Unfortunately, you just can't read it. Concentration. Uh, anyway, I don't know. I wanted to, I wanted to read the book. I wish I could. Wouldn't that be awesome? <clears throat> All right. So, uh, getting back to the well, it puts the well. Actually, I don't think this picture is a really good dis- depiction of where it's at. I think it's actually more over here. You look at this brush pile right here. I think the well is actually right over here. Yeah, because when you look at the at the pictures last night when they're when they're digging, like when Billy's digging up there, mm-hmm. like boys, and there's the road there, I guess. But they looked awfully close to Nolan's house. Yeah. Uh, Circuit Trova bought back in 2006. The show was in 2014. There you go. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> So yeah, several several years prior, seven already. Yeah, um, I grabbed this picture because I think is that it right there where they're working. That's what I'm kind of thinking because you could see when Gary was doing his metal detecting, you could see this road behind him. Yeah, and when the excavator's working or the backhoe's working, you can see the house behind yep. him. Yep, and it looks like a. a- a lawn right there with trees on the edge of it to the right. So, yes. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is where you see this dark pile right here. I think that's, I think that's where they're, where they're digging mm. yeah. the well. Yeah. Cause when you oh. look at the excavator, it's all fresh gravel around it. Mm-hmm. Did you see this? I happened to catch that too in the picture. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? Now it just it might be something on Nolan's property to show you're entering, you know, by the house there because it does like split. But I saw that and I thought, hmm, I wonder what that is. That kind of looks like those <coughs> containers or those concrete round. Oh, the the muon tubes containers. That the <laughs> the concrete. That the muon technology uh, sensors are down inside, and they did say they were putting some all over the island, didn't they? I don't know. I forget. I forget the number now, but it was more than just a few, right? And we know there's five just concentrated in the money pit. Um. Yeah, no, I can't do them in Streamyard. That's correct, Linda. Yeah, it has to be done on the YouTube side. Um. So yeah, yeah. Jan, 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 you're right. Yeah, you could see Nolan's house or garage in the background behind the machine for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it looked it looked fairly close. I'm guessing it was her garage. Another well, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking it. I a borehole cap. How about a hatch? Move mm-hmm. on, or just, you on, or, or just a nice big round rock. Or just a big round rock, yeah. But I saw that, and I thought, man, I wonder if that's a uh, if that's one of the sensors over there on his property. I mean, it makes sense, right, to put one out there. Mm-hmm. Why not? So. I'm really glad to see Tom get involved in all this. You know, we're over there looking for the the dam, yep. the wall on you know that's over here uh, on this end of the property, way up here in the top right corner, uh, looking. And we haven't heard anything more about that. But they had to get permits, right? Is that what they were waiting mm-hmm. on? Yeah. Going through the permitting process. Going through the permitting. There's the houses behind. That's why I grabbed this picture so you could mm-hmm. see Tom Nolan's property. The buildings right behind there. Yeah. So, yeah, that's how close they are. They're actually sitting in part of his... That's why I'm thinking that it's right there. Yeah, you can actually see two buildings behind the machine there, one to the right, one to the left. Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah, it just says looks like a rock. Yeah. Uh, one of the stones from the Tree of Life, would it be there? I don't know, Maybe. I uh, I don't know. I'd have to I'd have to get a better overlay and take a look. So anyway, the guys are out here starting to work on this well. They're starting to dig down and uh, see what they can go. And right off the bat, they find another spike. Yep, it's cool. It's a rose head spike. Um, I know that you know, and it's squared. You can see the square. It's square, so they can get a look at it and get it some dating on it and 
and help mm-hmm. to identify the date of. And again, folks, that's is is when they first pulled the spike up, I was like, oh, another spike. Okay, but I have to die. I, I have to step back from that for a moment and say they need things like this to help date the thing that they're digging up or that they're looking at. Um, I bet Billy was happy to be digging again. Yeah, he probably was. Yep. Um, somebody shared a picture over here in discord and I can't see it's, oh, it's under his finger. It says something. Oh, it does say it's got a picture and it's pointing to, oh, you're right. Let me go back. Thank you. Is that Ryan? Is that Ryan that put that up? Oh, I don't see your face. Blue clay. Somebody said that. Yeah, blue clay. Oh, there you go. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Zane. Thank you, Zane. Glenda just mentioned that too. I come and you and it was put up on there, but you're right. Blue clay. So that's so what two, that is a layer of layer. Clay. Now, yeah, why would layers. there be blue clay down there? What do they use blue clay for? Yep, you're stopping the water. Boom, baby. <laughs> yeah. So maybe the whole thing's in a, a huge box drain. <laughs> yep. Good job, Zane and uh and Ryan for catching that. Thank you very much. See, you guys are on top of it. Even while I'm looking at the picture and you caught it and I missed it. I didn't even see it. Just a different screenshot than yours. Yep. <laughs> different angle. Yep. Yep. You guys are on it, man. I'm telling you what. That's why I love. That's why. That's why I do these live because I love interacting with you guys. Uh, that this clay shouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh my gosh, another good point. In the preview for the show on yep. the 28th, Ian Spooner says the clay shouldn't be there. Yeah, and I'll I thought it, I thought he was talking about. Yeah, I thought he was referring to the well. When they're digging in the I well. did too. Mm-hmm. Coach, you guys, all of you guys, you're on it, man. I'm telling mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Anyone ask yet why Tom waited 10 years to mention the well? I have I, I kind of I thought the same thing, Arthur. I probably did. just wasn't relevant at the time. I I think that has to be it. He yeah. didn't think that it was relevant until they started talking about the one yeah. on lot 26. Mm-hmm. What was it? I think, I think even Alex made reference to that. Was it last week? Yes, when he, he was did. talking about how they start drawing all the clues together, stuff we don't, didn't think was relevant ten years ago, and then we find something now, and it's all of a sudden relevant. Yep. Yeah, like Linda just said, there they found ten wells on Oak Island. They didn't think they were relevant. Now mm-hmm. they're finding out that maybe they are, and mm-hmm. if they can get a date of them, then that helps to get an idea of when. If you can get a date of the well. Then you can take a look at who in the heck would have been there back that time. They were already saying the one well on lot 26 is 900 years old, right? So it was done in the 1100s or what? No, 11. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think what, what we're proving now is that there was a beehive of activity there in the 1600s, 1700s, but there was also people there well in advance of that. Yep. You know, and I mean, you can't attribute it all to one person. You know, in the if you go from 1600 to 1750, well, nobody lives to be 150 years old. So even that is multiple groups of people or associated people. Yep. Yeah, it was just pottery down there. Coach also said in the Nolans didn't use metal detectors. Yeah, to, uh, Fred Nolan did not believe in using metal detectors. Why? Who knows? Who knows why? But he didn't. And therefore, he never got to go and metal detect and find all these things. Um. Yeah, I'll bet Fred has so much data that it's impossible to know. Yeah, <laughs> what is and what isn't important. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Exactly right. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, and this was a cool find. This the hook. Yes. And you know, I thought I thought that was an interesting uh, interesting thing to find there. Yeah. And uh, as Carmen will talk about later, this long shank on it as well. Um, yeah, medieval still, baby. Still, right. we kind of need to to be metal detecting and pull something up, up you know, out of any ground anywhere. Really, it is. Let me tell you, it's exciting, even when it's a matchbox car. 
I don't know what it is until you dig it up. I'm going to be doing that this weekend. <clears throat> uh, off a Spanish galleon. Maybe. Could be. Could it be? Or Portuguese. Or Portuguese. Portuguese. Um, I was wondering about these pipes right here. You know, I thought that this hole, you know, I, I, I was... I had I was trying to find out about the hole that they had dug that was over on the other side of the money pit, um, and I thought, oh, they're going to show it next week. So I saw them digging a hole, but I was wrong again because it's this hole they're digging and not the one on the other side of the money pit. Yep. I still got the two pipes in it. Yeah. It's yeah, interesting to see that he put he, Fred obviously wanted to mark it for some reason, right? Yep. But why did he use two pipes? I don't know. I don't know. I thought the same thing. Why does he need two pipes down there? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And the pottery. Uh, Tom did say that they found broken pottery, a lot of yeah. broken pottery down in the bottom of the well. And yeah. sure enough. The blue glaze. Yep. Blue, blue glaze, glaze pottery. Blue glaze pottery. Yep. yep. There it is there. Another look at it. Cool stuff. But yeah, why they throw it in the bottom of the well, I have no idea. I guess because it, it's not going to contaminate the well and it could help to make a better bottom on it, maybe? I don't know. I have no idea. I, why Does anybody know why the significant, why you would throw broken pottery down a well? What, what well, the uh, un, Unless you were uh, leaving town in a hurry and it wasn't broken when you threw it in. <laughs> yeah, and you wanted to hide it. There you go. That's a good thing. Captain Hook, Ryan. I should have I should have had that ready. There you go. How about that? That's for Ryan. <laughs> Captain Hook. <clears throat> As the guys dug deeper and deeper, they were getting more and more uh closer. Obviously, the water was starting to drain in. They hit the they hit the spring, yeah. They hit <laughs> the, the spring. And that's the worst feeling in the world when you're digging down in that and the water starts to come in and you think, I can't dig fast enough. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you're done at that point. Mm. Um, and in which they pretty much were. They were pretty much done at that point. Um, yeah, I know. That's right. Yeah, I can. I can, too. Uh, Je uh, Linda was saying, Jenny, I can see the outhouse for trash, but a well. I don't know. I, I don't I don't get that part of it. <clears throat> yeah, it could be maybe that well had. You know, if they had a dry spell, the well would dry, and they dug another well, or they moved, and they just started using it for a garbage pit. Yep. Yeah. Wells were used for trash piles back in the day. I don't know, I guess. I just, I don't understand why you want to throw trash in it. Uh, pottery, I could kind of see if you wanted to make a nice solid base on the bottom of it, maybe, but, you know, because pottery is not going to contaminate it, but uh, I throwing trash in there, you're going to contaminate the well, unless that's your purpose when you're leaving. Yeah. I don't know. They found this uh, piece of a, a tool here also, this piece of metal uh, Gary found with the metal detector. And sure enough, mm -hmm. Alex brings over. He goes, oh, we got something like that right here. And he pulls out uh, the actual yep. uh, a tool there that sure enough, it's got the same kind of edge. You can see here where the, the handle would have been right in this area, the bottom of it. Yeah, so I don't, think there's, I don't think there's much doubt about that one. Not much doubt about that one. Get that, get that in the machine and find out what the metal composition is so we can date yep. it. If you can get a date, again, you get a date, you can help decide when this well was created. Because that's probably, well, I guess it could be a tool that was used to open up the well again later on. Maybe if somebody else came along and goes, hey, it looks like there's a well here. Let's open it up. And it doesn't actually, it doesn't prove that it's going to tell you the date of the well, but it could help you get a close idea. Um, yeah. Yeah, something that could have been dropped accidentally, like a cup, yeah, dropped into the well. I guess that, that's possible. Um, Didn't you say it looked like a plate or something, I think? Oh, did you already take care of that, Linda? I just saw your message. Hope so. I didn't catch that one. I'm sorry, what was that, Tom? I was just thinking, didn't Rick, Rick or somebody say it that the piece of pottery they found uh, felt like it was a part of a plate he did he did say that mm. yep mm. yeah he did say that i did catch that um okay oh okay <laughs> okay 
Thank you. Uh, all right. So, you know what? Then he decided to bring in these guys. And I thought this was a great thing to do um, to get the Hydrovac in here. Get a Hydrovac yes. in there. And uh, this is the guys from Clean Earth Industrial Services. And they arrived to start clearing out the mud and the water so they can dig. And, and this thing is so cool. When this thing is operating, man, oh, man. I mean, it was it was really going to town, cleaning up, sucking out all that junk around the well. Um, and there's those two pipes, like you mentioned. There they are right there. But this mm -hmm. thing is going down and sucking out all that stuff out of there so they can get a good look at it. Um, really cool. The only Rick, one that worried me about that was are, are, are they washing any – thing that's uh like twigs or charcoal or anything that's that's dateable out of there yep and that's why i was wondering i said to the guys in discord last night i said man i sure hope that they're going to take those spoils that are in that hydrovac truck and they're going to go dump them someplace and you mm -hmm. would think that they're going to i mean that's just a logical assumption right that they're going to take and dump those someplace and go through it yeah they better because you know, there's pottery, you know, there's going to be some pottery in it more than likely, mm -hmm. but what other artifacts might they find? Um, and should they test this water for silver content? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But look at that. And Rick was talking about the construction of this well. And he said on the show last night, he said that this well out of the, the, 10 wells and i guess i'm assuming again that there's 10 out of the 10 wells out of the on the island only two of them have this same type of construction yeah now i haven't seen these 10 i haven't seen we've only seen the two this one and the one on lot 26 mm -hmm. up close and personal on the show so you're going to have to take rick's word for it right because we yeah. haven't seen them i haven't seen them maybe yeah, what we know what we know is it. that in their opinion it's a similar construction right right so he said this one in the lot on 26 the one on lot 26 uh, are the similar construction the same type of stone a lot of flat stone not a whole lot of round stones there are some you can see some in there but a lot of flat ones that have flat surfaces on them uh, to make this thing and so that's why he's thinking the construction is very similar to the one on lot 26 so could they be dated around the same time period it's possible it's possible because you, you figure that the if the the hook they date dug out dates what did they say as late as 1690 perhaps right right so we're talking roughly 1700 and if that oak tree core sample that we'll talk about comes back 300 years old mm -hmm. right that's going to knock you back into the early 1700s yep right so they, they could be yeah exactly but yeah, look at that. That's just, I love that picture there because those guys using that uh, hydrovac are really getting all the stuff out in and around this well dug out of there. Really cool. There's a look at it uh, when <clears throat> that's when um, Rick was uh, telling them, come on out because they were going to dig a little bit deeper around the edge on the, uh, on the edge where this guy over here is where he's climbing out. Uh, they were going to dig a little bit deeper uh, on there and kind of get that cleaned up a little bit and then have another look at it. So uh, only two wells like this, the eight others were a different type of construction, according to Rick. Yeah. All right. So next we jump over to the research center. And before we go there, we're going to do a drawing. And while you're doing this drawing, I'm going to step away for just a moment. So uh, I'll, uh, Linda is going to come up. I'll put this down here. Linda, where are you? I'm here, yeah, I'm okay. here. All right, I'll go. be right back. Okay. We'll see if I can get this to show up better than it did last week. We trust you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, sort of. There you go, right there. Now, can you get a little closer? I can't. Gail Richards, if you're out there, send Linda a message. Yeah, Gail is here. I've seen her on the YouTube okay. side in the chat. So I need a private message from you with your address, please. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. 
What, as far what, as what I know, we week? are we are going to do one next week, even though there's not a regular show. We're still going to do a drawing. Have you decided what the prize is going to be next week? <clears throat> still up in the air. One of our members is donating um, Jim McQuiston's latest book. Oh yes, yes, yes! You told me that. Show me, show me the book. For those of you that haven't seen the book, <clears throat> there it is. Right, um, Michelle Gibson okay. is doing that. She's donating the latest of his books um, to anyone who's in the U.S. If you are outside of the U.S., rather than mailing it internationally, she's going to. How do I private message you? Um, she's going to send you an Amazon gift card so you can order it yourself. Ah, there you go. Wherever you are. So yeah. thanks, Michelle, for next week. But yes, Gail, um, how do you private message me? Are you on Messenger? If you're on Messenger, you just send me a message. Mm -hmm. If not, you could send you an email, Jeff, at your yeah. email right. address, right? No, he's not. Okay, Gail, uh, send uh, send an email to uh, jfree906 at gmail.com. jfree906 at gmail.com. Send me an email, and I'll send your information over to Linda, and you guys can get hooked up, and you can get your uh, your prize. Yep, there you yep. go, right there. That's the email address. Cool. Yeah, yep, just send me an email, and we'll get you taken care of. Same thing we did last week. So congratulations. Yep. All right. All right. Thanks. See you guys. All right. Bye. Thanks, Linda. All right. I and I just ran over. This is this is what I got from Kevin Dorsey when we had lunch the other day. Templar ring. A Templar ring. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, really cool. Get some dirt on it when you when you go to a gypsies event next week. Say, hey, guess what I found? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you can't do that now. I've already said it, so <laughs> you spoil it for me. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Oh, look at that. Look what I found. A Templar ring in Texas. <laughs> the Templars, baby. They were in Texas. Oh, uh, yeah. They were in Texas, nice and we can prove it. Yes, and we can prove it. Look. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, lot five, 30 digs. Let's see what we got here. Lot five, 30 digs. Love this show. Thank you. Appreciate it very much, Jim. That's awesome. Yeah, that is a cool ring. I know. Isn't that neat? I'm, I'm just, that's, that's a little thing on the side. On the side. It's a keeper. It's definitely a keeper. You betcha. All right. Over to the research center. Let's jump on that one real quick. Research Thank Center, you. yes. Oh, sorry. I jumped ahead of Linda there. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks, everyone. I like Dr. Pepper, too. Uh, that is one soft drink I cannot tolerate is Dr. Pepper. I know. <clears throat> I guess I can't be a part of the fellowship if I don't drink Dr. Pepper, right? Nope. It is a top pocket find, Robert. Thank you. Yes, it is. All right. So over to the Oak Island Research Center, and we have Peter Romke who joins us over there, and he has the results, and he's shown this to everyone. He has the results from the core samples that were taken from the oak tree on the border of Lot 2627 at the stone wall. Remember last week he went over there and he got the core any uh, the core and he drove it in there. And many of us were, you know, looking at that going, you know, wow, that's not a very big core sample. And I had and Tom and I were talking about this last week. There's it, very likely that we didn't see them all, that they were not going to sit there and, and bore no. us with him, you know. It's like everything else on the show. They're going to show you a segment of it so you get a flavor for it. But right. they're not going to stand around and, and you know. Watch a guy drill five boreholes. Yeah, exactly. Um, a forestry technician. Yeah. What is a forestry technician? Uh, I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the actual yeah. term of that. I would think it has something to do with, you know, uh, 
being able to. I mean, uh, I, I know what a forester is, and there's there's people with the in forestry management. Now, whether you know the technician, I'm not sure. Yeah, a mechanic for trees. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. an actual logger, maybe a tree guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you see on the table here, he's got five core samples. Now they said they were going to do a bunch of different trees in the area. Alex had mentioned that last week when when um, when he was out, when Peter was out there. Uh, he had mentioned about doing several, but whether or not they did, we assume they did, but I'm assuming that these are not all, but I think these are probably all from the same tree. Um, well, we know one of them is the second core for sure, because it's right on the, marked right on the stick. Yeah. That it was the second core. Yeah. Yep. Um, and one thing to note with this too, and I thought it was a very sad port, and, uh, and, and he mentioned this, uh, Peter mentioned this when he was taking the core, that he was a little concerned that the center of the tree might be rotting out. And that happens quite often with these older trees. The actual center mm -hmm. begins to rot and it rots its way to the outside. And you can yep. see the example of that right here in this core sample. It is definitely, uh, I don't know which end is which. I'm assuming this is the inside end and you can see that dark right there. That means that the wood is definitely starting to rot in the center of the tree. Um, oh, hello, Noel. Noel's here from uh, Australia. Australia. It must be like noon for you, and probably twelve noon for for uh, the mate down under. Uh, Noel's another one joining us in uh, Discord. Uh, but anyway, so that's a little bit because that uh, unfortunately the being, being rotten in the center of the tree is going to take away a little bit of your able ability to get a the rings. Those rings are going to be obliterated, and they're by. Yeah. By that, you're not going to be able to get those um, samples. You're not going to be able to get that sample from inside mm -hmm. the, the center of the tree uh, and be able to read the rings. Um, he said that uh, from what they showed, uh, he figures an age of 240 years. Oh, it's 11.30 a.m. Yeah, I figure it's about noon, yeah. Uh, 240 years based on the rings that they could count, and they could be off as much as 20 to 30 rings. He also yeah. tells them that the wood was rotten, once they got to a certain distance, uh, the group discusses the age and the purpose of the wall at that point. Yeah. So if you if you say that, let's say it's 240 years old, give or take a few years, that's going to put you back in the 1780s, right? As to when that tree would have been, you know, planted, grew up through the rocks, whatever, used as a marker, which we know is about the time that things started happening on Oak Island, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Now, another nice thing we'll get to in just a little bit. Um, we'll talk about it, being able to date that wall. We'll get to that in just a moment. Um, according to, uh, according to indeed the, the protects, they protects and preserves forest uh, on federal, state, and private lands. Duties include collecting, analyzing specimens, and preventing fire. Fire preventing Fighting, preventing fires. Okay. Yep. So there you go. Thank you, Jenny. Appreciate that. They enforce the rules and regulations. Forestry. All right. Um, have they determined that the that the oak tree was growing um, from under the wall or through the wall? Um, also, uh, this would also determine the tree was pre-wall. Right. Um, they, it's, they said that the, that the wall had to be there before the tree because the wall was built and then the tree was pushing it over and picking it up as it grew. So they're saying the wall was there before the tree. So if the tree is 240 years old, I'm going to say probably at a minimum because they can't count the inner sink, inner portion of it because it's rotten. I'm going to say it's probably older than 240 years, but we don't know. So like Tom said, that puts yeah. you about 1780 mm -hmm. or thereabouts with the 240 or so. Mm -hmm. So if it's older, it could date back into the early 1700s. We don't know that. But mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we just can't get that close of a date. Next yeah, is, I don't know. To me, it looks like the like the tree is, is pushing up against the rocks, but uh, I don't yeah. know. Which, which would indicate that the well, the rocks. To me, the, that rocks thrown, yeah. the rocks. The rocks were up against the tree or built around the tree, because mm, the maybe. way the tree. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm not yep. there. I didn't see the tree, so. 
Yeah. Well, we'll find out. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's see. I was just reading. Finding uh, finding wood in the drilling core, coring trees, etc., might not be interesting find, but it in, uh, by itself, but it helps set a date, <clears throat> a date and time. Um, yeah, exactly. To help. Yeah, fill in I the don't picture. know. The tree was left there for a reason, right? Yep. I mean, every other tree around has been cut down. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no tree in the area that's even comparable. That's true. Yeah, that's true. It's very much like uh, Brick's Oak, Brick's Tree. Um, so in the research center, as they continue on, this was later in the show, but they bring out Carmen Leg. Carmen comes out to get a look at that hook that Gary found in the well. It, was come, it came out of the spoils from the well that they dug on Nolan's property. Um, I don't think that one was Gary's, was it? I, oh, Gary's Oak. Okay. Gary's, yeah. Gary likes to drop his H's. Gary's Oak. Yeah. Gary's. <laughs> oh. Gary's Oak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, this particular hook that he found over there, and it, like I said, that was in the spoils that they pulled up out of the well on the property. And uh, so um, Carmen gets a chance to look at it. He said it has a long shank on it, which means that it was from a block and tackle. Yeah, which makes that makes sense. I mean, if you're going to dig a well, it's 10 feet deep. Right. And you're putting rocks in and out of it. You're digging soil out of it. You're, you know, you're going to put a tripod over the well. You're going to use a block and tackle to, to get the stuff out of the bottom of it. Plus, mm -hmm. if you're going to lower rocks down to, to build your rock wall, you know, it makes sense that something like that would be there. Yep. And there you see one. That's an old block and tackle right there. Um, very good picture of one. Uh, that one's probably pretty modern compared to this one, I would think. But it's, uh, you can see it's kind of looks like it's squared off. And yes, it was Carmen dated. And if you look at that, you know, those dates of 1650 or so, I mean, you know, Jim McQuestion is a big guy that says things start to happen around 1632. So it's throwing that date right into Jim's wheelhouse too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very good point. All right, now we jump over to the stone wall, lot 26. Alex, Laird, and Miriam are continuing to excavate the wall on lot 26. Uh, and they, they've reached down, uh, they finally get to a point where it looks like they're starting to get to the bottom of it, and Laird finds this. Um, and it looked like a, a stick with burnt on the end, but he called it a piece of, uh, it looks like charred wood to me, but it, it he called it a charcoal sample. But either way, um, I got another picture of it right here. Gotta love that trowel, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's his new, that's his new trowel. Mm -hmm. And this I was has been for we 3,000 trout, yeah. Yeah. The other guys so, are using a standard standard triangle trowel, but Laird's got the, Laird's got the specialty the item. Yeah. Yeah, and you're saying that's got to be for a right hander, right? Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's any good for a lefty. A lefty, you're going to be digging away from you, and a righty, you're going to mm -hmm. be pull. I'm a lefty, so I'm at, I, you know I, yeah. I couldn't I couldn't use it. It would be useless for me. <laughs> they probably make a lefty version of it too. I would. Imagine. I would imagine. That's that's really a cool trial. Yeah, I love that. Keith said he loves that trial. I do too. Very cool. Um. So uh, let's see. Oh, he called it a burnt twig, not the same as Alex charcoal. Yeah. Okay, a burnt twig. Yeah, and that's exactly what it looked like to me—a burnt twig, like it was burnt on the end. Now you put this together with the tree, and 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 Laird said that it was underneath the rocks. In in the makeup of the wall. So what does that tell you? That tells you that it was, it was there when the wall was constructed. Now you can get a date on it, and you can get an approximate date of when the wall was built. Yeah, it suggests to me because I mean they find those flat rocks at the bottom, right? That suggests to me that it might have been some kind of a fire pit. Yeah. Well, this was the date that you got right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rock wall uh tp3 i don't know uh, uh august 31st 22 charcoal and soil so depth 30 centimeters so foot down yeah yep and he's got to mark his charcoal on there yeah he does charcoal plus soil i think it says yeah plus soil yeah yep 
Yeah, because you see there's a bunch of dirt in there too. Mm -hmm. But that might, yeah, hard to say. Because I you, you know Alex found that piece of charcoal in there as well. So interesting. So August 31st is when they were working on that that section. And there is the uh, there's this this bottom. They think they've reached the bottom of this thing. You can see these flat mm -hmm. stones down here. And in the one picture you see out here that uh, uh, Craig and Rick Lagina came out and they're having a look at that. And you see Laird standing in the bottom of them. So you can see how deep this is. Now, this is also telling them, and, and, and Craig mentioned this during the show. He was talking about the fact that it is so well built. This thing is, is you know, got a, a, a good base under it with flat stones and then the other stones yeah. piled on top, and he thinks that it's more of a maybe a foundation uh, than it is a wall. It does go back a long way, but it stops. Yeah. Well, so, it does, that doesn't mean that that portion wasn't a, a foundation, right? Or correct. the basis for a fire pit, or even a chimney of some sort. Right. Right. It doesn't. You know, it's, I, there's. I don't think there's any way that whole thing is a wall. It's running right down a property line. Right. Exactly. And I, I know Rick doesn't think that it's a property line, but that mm -hmm. section may not be a property line. It could be for a totally different purpose. Right. Yeah. Because this thing continues on. They're they're standing in a little break in the oh, wall yeah. right here because it continues on and it runs down to those tall reeds that were down by the, the, the little pond that's over there, the little mm -hmm. water area um, that yeah. I'm pointing over my shoulder like this way. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I can see it behind you there. Yeah, it's back behind me, the water. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, so anyway, so it, there was like a little break there. Um, and, you know, I thought about what about a pen? You know, like a, a pen for the, the oxen or something. Mm. Could it have been like a pen area? They built a wall up and it made a, a pen because they had oxen. I mean, where did they, did they keep them all in a barn? I mean, yeah. Okay. The, other, yep. the other thing, too, that we see with those. With that wall, remember you could see those 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 odd piles of rocks that they were finding at the end that didn't yes. seem to serve any purpose. Well, if you think about it, if you're back in the day of 1600s, whatever Portuguese, maybe I don't know, but they they would have had a certain amount of forced labor there. And the guys building the wall were not necessarily the guys dragging the rocks to the guys building the wall. Right. Right. So they're going to haul the rocks. They're going to dump them. Right. And when the fellow has finished building the wall. He's just going to ignore those or they had to leave or whatever. They're just leftovers. Right. Yep. Perfect point. Because they don't know how what they're going to need. They just keep bringing them until they tell they them to stop. Keep bringing them. them. Yep. Yep. Um, yes, there was. Craig asked the question, wasn't there some wharfs uh, in the area or part of a wharf? Yes. And this is in that general area. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to look at an overhead picture of the island to be able to tell you for sure. And I think... I, I don't I don't think I grabbed one in this set. I, I don't believe I did. Um, I'm trying to think, isn't there a slipway down there where the rocks are, are parted? Or am I thinking of a different lot? Yes. There's like right there where the, the pond is, where that little water pond is. There was mm -hmm. on I think on both sides of it. There were and they're on the they're on the east side of that little pond where the wall is. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at it from the air, it would be on the right side. That's the wall where they're working, and there was a there was a wharf that ran out from there. That's the one that uh, there was two. One was longer than the other that Tony dove on last year. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's an island that was you know speckled with farms and a lumber mill at one end and things like that. So quite possible that there was multiple wharfs in that general area. Yeah, but we know that there was definitely two. Um, mm -hmm. stone pile for ship ballast. Yeah, maybe. Um, ah, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, all right. So continuing on, we jump over to the interpretive center. Um, while those guys continue to work on the wall and over here in the interpretive center, uh, they got, uh, Craig and, uh, Rick show up over here with a uh, layered and they're getting a look at the other two, those two pieces of wood that we saw early on, um, in the show, uh, at the very beginning that, um, uh, Rodney brought over and there they are in the table in front of Craig right there in front of him. Uh, they're 
checking out. Emma was running those. She scanned those to see what she could find. And sure enough, mm -hmm. AU right there. That's AU right there. Um, so they found gold. Now, something that she said that I and I and I wish she would have said how much. Remember the exactly. first one was 0.11, mm -hmm. which we figured out was how much? Do you remember what we came 1, up million, with? One million one hundred thousand parts per billion. One hundred one hundred one hundred one yeah. million one hundred thousand parts per billion. Parts per billion, right. And she said something in one of these uh, that she had mentioned that some other ones that she scanned, she said that were on the opposite side from the crane. Right. Now, you know, the crane is on the north side. So on the south side of the shaft, one of the samples down there, point it was 0.13%. Correct. Percent. And she said it gets more as they go down, but she mm -hmm. didn't say how much more. No, and it sounded like she had a reading that was higher than 0.13, or at least that's the way they make it sound on the yes, on the edit. Yep. yep. So it left me wondering right there. I mean, how much? How much more? But she never did say a number. I kept she listening didn't. for that, and I went back and listened again. So and sure I, enough, yeah. she never did say. No. Oh. Um, this particular piece of wood was from 58 feet on the crane side. Mm -hmm. Uh, the wood was scanned with the XRF, and Emma, Emma tells them that the wood scanned uh, last week was 0.13% gold, and the wood came up from the crane uh, side contains more gold. Um, so they will start comparing the gold values from, um, from wells that they have drilled so they know where to focus. So some of the some of the wells that they have drugged, that they got pieces of wood, you know, those core samples when they come up that they've got mm -hmm. in the sausage in the sleeves that they cut open. They're going to start testing those a little bit closer from the different bore holes and looking at the content of the gold in the wood around those mm -hmm. different bore holes. So they can, again, use like the Ian Spooner mapping to find out over the blob. And they came up with the blob and then the, the baby blob. Um, they were able to narrow it down. They were looking at that point, they were looking at the gold content in the water. Now they're going to look at the gold content in the bore wood samples that they pulled up and the depths at which they had those wood samples. So that'll help them to narrow in on exactly uh, where it is. Uh, the I'd like to know if, if, they, if they can tell when they take those wood samples, is the gold what surface the gold is actually on? Is it on the exterior um, of the shaft or the interior? They would have right. to know at that point when they take the wood sample out of there, which one is inside, which one's the outside. They'd have to mark them in some way, but that's a really good point. Yeah. The other point is too, and it's kind of, it's, it's kind of my far way out theory, is that if you were going to ship a truckload of silver or a truckload of gold, you're most likely going to ship it in, in bar form, right? So your, your yes. bar form is, is going to be, you don't need a bag or a chest because you're not going to be able to lift them, right? You have to lift them individually or store them individually. Right. And you throw them in the hole of a boat on the wood and they're soft metal. So right. if anybody uses the theory that they had to dismantle a ship to use the wood to make a shaft, wouldn't it make sense that some of that soft metal would rub off on the, on the wood? Yeah. That's, That's my far out theory for the day. That's my far out theory for the day. That's your speculation for the day. <laughs> and it's all back in that 1700 range, which is when yeah. they were supposedly trying to get the treasure out of Lewisburg, which was built in the 1700s. Ah, very good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. So yeah, that's my wild yeah. speculation for this week. Yeah, that's that's and that's good. I mean, you know, in that that's the thing is that you take a look at that. Is it plausible? Um, and I got that from uh, you know, Mythbusters talking about something being plausible or not plausible. That is a plausible theory. Makes sense. Yep. Uh the blue AU about in the center is the gold content. Oh, is that the blue AU? Yeah, that's the one I was looking at there. This one right here. Mm -hmm. Center. The AU right there. But I can't tell. Yeah, there's the, one. There's 1.0, and that would put it 
One point five. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, you have to. You have to know the scale. One point six, maybe. One point seven. Because there's one right here, and I know my mouse is probably going crazy again. So one point five would be about right here. So that's about one point six, one point seven. So that is more, right? That is more. So that was this week. How about next week? So next week, they talked about digging up the quadrilateral, which is this picture right here. I'm assuming so, because they mentioned it while they showed this picture. They were talking about it. Um, season 10, episode 96, yeah. Oh, uh, the fellowships top top ten. Oh, up next. Okay, that was what's up next for that. Anyway, so yeah, there they are. You see this big pile of boulders back here behind him, and now he's digging up these right here. So there they begin the quadrilateral, and we're gonna find out when he digs down in there is that exactly where Ian had said clay doesn't belong there. Now I did try to get a better picture of this. This was a little thing that they dug out of the side of the uh, hole that they were digging in the quadrilateral. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know what it is. It's some know. kind of a, it's a, it's, it looks like it's metal and it's it looks like it has meaning? a piece of chain link or something. Yeah. Or chain. Is there, it looks like there's another piece back here. Yeah. Whoops. Sorry. Or, or, they find, or they find another, uh, hook another hook possibly yeah i don't know yeah something they know. can date you know they can anyway yeah I, I i love the fact that they're getting into these places and they're starting to narrow down some of these dates right once you narrow down the date you can narrow down the activity yeah i agree exactly right and that's why it's important yes i mean like i i've said it a hundred times on the show you know, we get bored with seeing them pull out another spike, rosehead spike, or another, you know, you know, piece of metal of some sort or a piece of wood. But in the process, it does help them to determine an age just to whatever it is that they're working on. In this case, it's the quadrilateral, and they pulled this out. If they can date it, it helps get them a better idea of when the quadrilateral was created. Mm-hmm. Now, if they can get down in there, and you heard Ian, and I thought I had a picture of it, but I do not, um, where he was standing up holding a big chunk of clay in his hands. Um, and he was talking about, you know, it doesn't belong there. And I'm glad, oh, I did have a picture of it. I thought I thought I didn't. There it is right there. Yep. And there's the look on his face. This doesn't belong there. What is clay doing down here? And that's exactly what, Fred Nolan said in that picture. Thank you guys for catching that earlier. <clears throat> and what are they using it for? To <clears throat> screw something up. Yep. Boy, we can, you know, next week, let's speculate on that. <laughs> let's speculate on what is at the bottom of the quadrilateral. Goodness knows. <laughs> we could go all night just on that alone, I think. Yep. Yeah. Well, I think be the big thing with the dates is that, that now you can look at the different structures in the swamp, different things around the islands. You're, get, you're going to nail it down to pockets of dates, mm -hmm. and those pockets of dates will tell you who was doing what in certain areas of the island at a certain time. Exactly. Right? You know, like the Portuguese didn't come in and build a road and, and, and you know, a different uh, structure at the end of the swamp and then dig a well. Somebody else dug the well because we know what the date is it on. So what did the Portuguese build the roads for? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and it go, you know, you go back to that whole thing about those roads and that big platform mm -hmm. and the dating of it, you know, being around the 1200s. Mm -hmm. I mean, what in the world? And I, and I know I've said this before, but it still boggles the mind for me personally to what, why would you have needed something so significant as the road and the platform that back in back in the 1200s mm -hmm. what would they have need who would have been there to build it first of all and what would you have needed it for yep that's a and monumental that, effort to build that, that yeah and that and that is as somebody mentioned to me one time too is that 
if you're told to build a road or a pathway and you only know one way to build it and you're using any kind of forced labor, mm-hmm. you're going you're gonna to build it the way you were told to build it. You, you're not going to be told what it's for. Right. Right. Exactly. You're not you're not a high enough rank to know what you're just told to build a road. Yeah. Build a road. Yep. Yep. Uh, so I don't know that it just again, you know, you, you you got these dates going all the way from the 1100s to the 1800s and everything in between that. And it's all there's something on the island. I mean, it goes back. There was something it was even found 19 900, I think, goes back. Uh, I forget what that can't think off the top of my head what that no. was but you take all of those dates and you got everything in between what in the world why oak island of all places and and i think rick mentioned at one time if you went around to the other islands that are nearby frog island and some of the other ones that are nearby mm-hmm. would they have that type of activity that they've seen on oak island would they find things that go back from say a thousand a.d to 1800 would they have, would they find artifacts that go back that far in that spread? Why Oak Island? That's the mystery. It, it That's the mystery. Exactly. And now, because we know for a fact that there are tunnels underneath there, were they mining tunnels? I I don't think so. I still don't want to believe that they were. But and, the only, the and only the, thing that throws you, throws you off the mining idea is the volume of silver because they weren't mining silver right okay they were mining gold in nova scotia yes but dr spooner said that the type of gold that they are finding is not geologically suitable for the area correct how you tell that i have no idea but he's a specialist they know that yeah him and fred i forgot the guy's name who was working with him to help him get the gold samples in the water Mm -hmm. but exactly right i mean it, and and how much of it they're finding. Um, I think they should metal detect Frog Island. Yeah, I think they should too, Ray, but I think yeah. can't because it's privately owned. Where Double else could Island. you go in, where else could you go in the world, dig up a piece of wood and find a trace of gold on it? Yeah. Matt Lukeman is one, but there's another guy, uh, Linda, the guy that was on the TV screen. He's only been on the TV screen. I've never seen him in the sh- on the island. Um, that that was the one that actually helped them to determine that there wa- there was gold in the water. I can't remember is that. that Doctor Michaels, is that who it was? Michaels, I think that's it. Yes, yes, Doctor Michaels, something. Yes, that's mm-hmm. him. Yeah. So you know, and and the amount of gold that they're finding in water, and 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 that's because my thinking was that the the treasure's gone. It's long gone. It's been found. They took it out of there, and it's gone. But with the fact that. You know, they're, they're finding still finding that much residue in the water means that it has to still be there. So where exactly, mm-hmm. where exactly is it? Yeah. And the other thing to keep in mind too, if they're they're refurbishing the garden shaft now, we think that the wood that they're finding is somewhere in the seventeen hundred range. But who says that they didn't refurbish it in seventeen hundred? Mm-hmm. That they were digging back down again to recover something. So they had to go find the shaft, and they had to do the same thing these fellows are doing. They got to yep. refurbish the shaft to get down there. Yep. Yep. That's very true. Ah, uh, so I don't know. There you go. Another episode down. We only got a few left. So next week, folks, so let's do that. Um, if it turns out to be that uh, the History Channel is actually has it correct, and that we do not have a uh, Curse of Oak Island show, <laughs> Linda, I tell you, Linda has spent a lot of time trying to find out i won't tell you how but she goes through a lot of pain to try to find out for us linda knows people she knows people and she's been trying to find out what's coming up on the you know for prizes and all this kind of thing that we're working on and so in that process of that they don't even have all the answers they can't give all the answers and then you look at the guide and the guide doesn't have it had the same show listed for three weeks in a row or something like that. It's craziness. Yeah. So their, their record keeping is not real great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they know for sure yeah. how they're going to end the season, but so next week, let's do that. Let's let's, you know, if, if we have a drilling down a new one, we'll talk about it a little bit. Uh, yeah. I need to know. I <laughs> do. I need three or four. Exactly. Linda, you're exactly right. Yes. And that's what she tells them. I need to know. You have to tell me. And they, yeah. 
So let's do that next week. We'll, it, we'll talk about Maddie's show, whatever it happens to be. We'll talk about it a little bit, but let's do a little bit of a, uh, something unique. Let's, let's just have a, a chat between Tom and myself. And if Colin shows up or whoever else we might have, and you folks that come to the show, let's kind of just have a chat about it. Let's talk about what we think is coming up, what we've seen already. Uh, we're going to come up with a few questions for you guys. We'll put them into the um, Facebook group page. Uh, and that is the Curse of Oak Island and Beyond Facebook group. If you are not a member of it, you can actually come and be a member of that. We'll put some questions out there that we will ask you uh, on and get your answers to on next Wednesday night. And we'll go over that. Yep. So I think that'll be a fun night. We'll just make it a, uh, not a recap night, but we'll just make it a fun night just to kind of do some speculating. You guys, I know you got to be good at I'm really good at speculating. I can. <laughs> Lots of ideas out there. You just heard my crazy one. So yeah, Tom, Tom had a really good one there. I thought so. All right, folks, that's it. That's it for me. Tom Burns, any final thoughts from you, sir? Nope. We're good. All right. And we'll have another giveaway next week as well, I think. Right, Linda? Nod, yes. Yes, Linda says yes. We'll have another giveaway next week. And for those giveaways, is it still the same where you have to go and you'll see. Linda will put up the picture of the giveaway uh, on the Facebook group page. She'll make a, a, a post about it. And you have to say yes in there. Not in here, but in there. You say yes in there and you will automatically be entered in the drawing for next week's giveaway right did i do that correct is that right all right yes i'm getting the nod. we're getting the official yeah. nod so we're good yes <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right folks thank you again so much for being here with us tonight don't forget to like and subscribe that like really helps us out a lot and uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow night we'll be talking expedition bigfoot for those of you that like it we're still covering expedition bigfoot season three episodes five six and seven tomorrow night uh, tomorrow night, it'll just be myself and Mike Owen. And I'm also going to release, uh, make public that little video that I put up tonight of some adventures that I had last weekend with the Mid-Florida Bigfoot Research Group. I'll put that up and I'll make that public here in just a little bit. Um, so that's it. And we'll catch you tomorrow night or next week right here on the Curse of Oak Island and Beyond live stream. Good night, everyone. Good night.